so let's come back and this is a separate topic again a short note they will ask you write a short note on shape selective catalyst so very important and easy also so basically uh, shape selective catalyst are called zeolites right so if i have to speak about the term or zeo basically if i have to see zeo means to boil okay what is this we'll see now the person who has invented this word that is in 1756 was <coughs> alex frederick so what did he do alex frederick done so now this person he has picked up a silicate mineral so silicate mineral basically is still bite i have one of the silicate mineral it's not busy this one of the uh, uh, silicate mineral is still bite so now when he has taken the sil bite uh, silicate mineral and when he started uh, uh, like uh, boiling this right so he observed that a lot of water or in the form of that steam yeah that steam the large amounts of steam let me write first so that you can note your notes large amount of steam got trapped where did it get trapped it got trapped in this uh, stone it's which that zeolite stone which is obtained from the volcanic rocks that got trapped in the spaces so then he said okay fine so <clears throat> this concept where he has seen the trapping of that steam due to boiling then he termed or coined this term as zeolite right so the light okay that particular uh, uh, mineral and zeo means to boil so the concept came from this so next important thing when i have to define the ze zeolite so zeolites are basically if i have to write for one mark you can write these are microporous alumino silicate hun, three dimensional honeycomb structures three dimensional honeycomb structures right these are this now <coughs> these zeolites as i said they have a silicate network so here they are in the, when you see the structure of the zeolite you have a framework where you find the setup aluminium is linked oxygen then linked with silica one of the other you have different varieties of zeolites again existing right so if i have to speak one of the zeolite which i uh, already have written that is natrolite right let us write some examples some examples are natural light again i have written still bite yes <coughs> right so this uh, when i have to see the uh, concept of this these zeolites they are going to because of their shape selective they have certain sites three dimensional sites for allowing or they can trap certain small or ions the cations into their sites so what are they they can trap because of this three dimensional structure and the uh, sites inside them they can easily trap ions like na plus where i have written one the aluminum oxygen silica network is already there along with that they can trap ions like potassium they can trap ions like magnesium right so easily they can fit into the sites of this zeolite now when they fit because the properties will change isn't it so the because of this it can it's widely used in petrochemical industries it's widely used in different uh, biochemical aspects also so zeolites one important nature because of the three dimension structure and because of the honeycomb structure it can further trap different ions Done. this is okay and after this <coughs> when i have to further go into the three marks answer i have to answer it further then you can start your answer write the definition write the example like this right then write the use of this and then after that let us write the source so where is this obtained it can be obtained from both i can uh, like uh, get it from the biological source and also i can make it synthetically in the uh, this in lab so source is volcanic rocks right volcanic from volcanic rocks also we obtain zeolites done and next as i said synthetically or chemically also i can prepare uh your uh, zeolite done so let's see in volcanic rocks and synthetically manufactured let's see how can we write the reaction further manufactured let's see this yes 
let's see how is it obtained uh, through volcanic like, uh, the natural resources so now we very well know during volcanic eruption that <coughs> your volcanic eruption when it cools down you all know volcanic eruption isn't it the ash which is released right that ash <coughs> first you know it's going to get collected and it go it's going to form an ash bed then yes that these ash beds you know further they can they get mixed up with your sea water which is around or the lake water whatever uh, water bodies are around so they get mixed up so two options here one thing is when they get mixed up with sea water that is one way suppose if these ash beds are further uh, carried out or for the person and uh, when they further they when, once they are further carried out and further they mix with water bodies here if i say okay let us say this is lake water better alkalinity i'm speaking about alkalinity basically now further when these ash beds they go and mix with sea water we very well know the salt content is very high yeah alkalinity will be very high so when the sea water or the alkalinity is very high <coughs> the at this particular ash as well as your alkaline water or the sea salt water the mix up and they harden when they hardened the type of rock which it forms is called natural zeolite so once again i said the wood during volcanic eruption the ashes of the what ash water was released it forms ash beds during its flow suppose if lake water and sea water if it mix up now what combination we do we have we have ash plus salt water now this ash plus salt water will get hardened and it forms natural zeolites done simple isn't it this is how it's going to form now when i have to come back and speak about synthetic or your artificial zeolites how do we prepare what did we say they are microporous alumino silicate network so simple basically these we we also call them as molecular sieves sieves the porous nature now these particular thing how do they do they are going to pick up your aqueous solution of alumina that is al2o3 and silica si so when they mix up these two solution with what do they mix they mix up with sodium hydroxide so when they mix up together <coughs> what are the reagents i use i'm going to use an equivalent weight of the reagent that is your equivalent reagent used is both the combination of this sodium silicate and aluminum silicate equivalent reagent i am going to use is um, na2sio3 sodium silicate aluminum silicate right so sodium silicate and aluminum silicate the both uh, i am going to use as a reagent then i get a network of aluminum oxygen and silica framework this is your synthetic uh, zeolite so naturally i made it from the volcanic rock synthetically i am going to follow this procedure and prepare that zeolite so let us come back and learn the uses of zeolite which are which is quite common when they ask you so important thing zeolite okay this is Fedric, I have written C. Okay, F F D R I K. I'm sorry here. Fedric, done. So, seventeen fifty six introduction, definition, examples. Uh, it can trap ions and listen. Further, we learn the uses, and you can also write the source from which is obtained. This is also source. Then, let us come back and learn the uses.